Hello and welcome to The Widow's Oil. Today I want to share with you something that is actually very heavy on my heart, a understanding that is starting to form in my inward parts. So I'm just going to share that with you. I've always said that I'm not against using the name Yeshua because I know at the moment many people use that name and they apply it to Jesus as we know him. But the understanding is starting to form in my heart that this Yeshua is in fact another Jesus. And to explain that to you, we first have to think about um, our Lord warning us and saying that that in the time of the end, there would be um, many who would come and show end time signs. And he also said it would be as in the days of Noah. And everything he says has many different meanings. There are many meanings that can be taken out. Um, there are many meanings to things in scripture. For example, when he says, as in the days of Noah, one thing that we see, for example, is the rise of homosexuality being openly embraced. Um, we also see violence, um, things like that. So we can see on the earth the application. But as in the days of Noah also has a more spiritual application. And that refers to Genesis 6, when we read that the um, sons of God um, mated with the daughters of men. Now, there are many doctrines, the Nephilim and all those doctrines. Don't waste your time with that, people. Those are all carnal doctrines which are hiding the truth. So, as always, there is our earthly manifestation, which is not wrong to see, but the truth lies in the deeper spiritual meaning. So we know that Satan did fall to the earth. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying about the fall, fallen angels. I'm asking though, with I'm asking you to just set aside all those thoughts and just try and hear what I'm saying and Ask the Lord to reveal this to you. He may not reveal it straight away, but if you ask him that what I, if what I'm saying is the truth, in due time, he will reveal it to you if you don't understand it now. So the meaning of that spiritually um, connects to what Jesus said, that as in the days of Noah, they were marrying and being given into marriage. And it connects to Genesis 6 about this, the marrying or the mating of the sons of God with the daughters of men. So we see this marrying of those that shouldn't marry, basically. They were different in different camps, if I can put it that way. Now, we know also in Romans 7, Paul says that we had to die to the old covenant way to be married to Christ. So we see that um, also another part in Ephesians, I, I think it is in Ephesians 5. So yeah, we see what I'm referring to, Romans 7. Therefore, my brethren, you have also become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. So we see there that idea of being married to Christ. So Christianity is being married to Christ. You see? And um, he also speaks here as the law having dominion over the wife and she being bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. Okay, so we see here this idea of marrying 
Christ or being married to the law, if I can put it that way. You've got the same thing in Ephesians 5, which we know very well, um, where it says the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. Husband life as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word. Um, and then Paul says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So what he is saying here is he has practical, earthly advice of how a husband should and a wife should have a sound marriage. But this is also spiritual. He's spiritualizing a marriage on earth and comparing it to a marriage Christ and the church are married. So what I am saying is that what Jesus warned us about, that marrying and giving in marriage and the mixture that happened in um, Genesis 6, the spiritual meaning of that is the ecumenical movement, but not only that, it's actually far deeper than that. And that is this marriage that is currently happening between Christianity, the evangelical Christianity, and Messianic Messianism, whether it be Hebrew roots, which is the more light form, or the one that is now becoming even more prominent, Messianic Judaism. Okay, so... What you've got there is this mixture that God said we are not to do because what is happening now is we are mixing grace and law. And the Lord spiritually warns in Genesis 6, what comes from that is a giant. Now, a giant is not just physically a giant. It refers to a tyrant, a tyrant. It means that oppression comes. It means one oppresses the other. So just look at it spiritually and try not to think carnally because if you think carnally, you cannot compare spiritual with spiritual and you cannot get revelation. You keep you, you are stuck in a lower level of understanding. Now, I don't want to sound prideful if I say a lower level because every level has truth for us. You see, um, it, it, the Bible is a spiritual book and it has the symbolism. But people get stuck in the carnal and then they cannot receive the spiritual and then it, it, it leads them to fall into twisted doctrines. So what I'm saying to you is that we see at the moment an unholy marriage between what we have come to know as the evangelical Christianity, the final form of Christianity, our modern day Christianity um, with this new Judaism. And that is why I see in it the bringing forth of then this Antichrist, which is going to be called Yeshua which is going to combine everybody. The initial part of the ecumenical movement under the Pope of Rome, that part was the binding of the strong man because Jesus said you cannot break into a house and plunder a strong man's good before you bind him. So binding them together in bundles to burn them that is what we have been seeing for this last hundred years with all these revival movements and Pentecostal and um, charismatic, which then became ecumenism under the Pope. That is binding them in a bundle to be burnt because when we do not remain in Christ, and when we bind ourselves to a harlot, then we will become drunk in the spirit. We will not be awake. We will not remain in the 
hid in Christ, we will be cut off and eventually burned. So that part was the binding. The next part is this part where Judaism, Christianity, and I think maybe Islam are going to be joined together with this false um, Messiah. And this Messiah is going to come from our midst. Why? Because the church is the mother, spiritually speaking, and she brings forth children, spiritually speaking. So when she is in a union with Christ, she brings forth the sons of God, the Christians, and I'm not saying they are perfect all. Of course, we know the Lord said many will say, Lord, Lord, but there is the true believers among them. But when the church is married off to the law again, it is like Lot having children with his daughters while he is drunk. You see, it's an abomination in the spirit. The result of that, the fruit of that, will be this Jewish Jesus called Yeshua, who is a false Jesus. It will probably happen slowly. All this making you scared is paralyzing you so that you think the end is upon you and you cannot think properly, but it's not going to be like that. I, I can't know this for a fact, but my experience in South Africa tells me it's a slow boil the frog process. First, you are you brought, brought to a point where you think there is going to be a civil war or some terrible nuclear attack. Now, there may be, but it's not going to be the end of the world because there is going to be a false peace according to these um, signs and wonders that they bring. And then there is going to be the slow change of the churches to push out Jesus and true believers, as has already been happening. I mean, many true believers are not even in the churches anymore. But it's going to ramp up. And then it's going to change. So your Antichrist is not going to appear in Jerusalem there in the temple, though that may be done as a false sign and wonder. The true Antichrist is going to emerge within the church where it's the spiritual sun, if I can call it that, of this merging of firstly the Hebrew roots and then the Torahism, the following the Torah and eventually Messianic Judaism. So I think that you need to stay with the word Jesus if you are using that word. If you have been using Yeshua, I would ask you to seriously consider what I'm saying. The process of seduction is slow and Satan is very crafty. I would seriously ask you to consider to move back to the sound pattern of words which we've received. Because at the end of the last age, before the temple and that system was destroyed, it was the end of the age. And the, the um, Apostle John was speaking to the believers, warning them of the many antichrists which were already there. And he said, hold on to what you heard at first. And in Revelation, we are also told, return to your first love. So what I'm saying is don't get terrified. The process is going to happen slowly. Your confusion will go away if you seek the truth from the Lord and you do not follow the multitude to do evil because the multitude will, will follow um, the blind guides into the ditch and it will be a very difficult force to resist. But if you are able to hear the shepherd's voice, you will 
be able to receive my words. They will be words of comfort rather than making you angry. If they make you angry, you need to go pray. Then there then, then, then is strongholds in your mind which is causing you to be triggered, as they say. Um, but if not, um, I want to comfort you. I don't think it's going to be a, what they say, a terrible destruction. That is for us to, to be scared and make the false peace. And then the infiltration will be from our midst. The Antichrist will rise up from out the Christian church, the so-called remnant, but it's not a true remnant. It's what they call the remnant. But it is those that will be in union with um, law keeping and bring forth this, um, this connector of the Jews and the Christians um, remaining the faith, the Lord will reveal everything. We will know what is going on, even though it's very confusing now. We have time, but the moment you fall into the delusion and you start to keep the law, you are going to have the veil over your eyes and you are going to become part of this um, Antichrist movement.